Hello, and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show, where we show you one cool thing, which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan. This is Tom Brandt. Uh, if you are watching us live on Facebook, please comment and ask questions. We will answer your questions about holiday desktops and laptops and cell phones and, well, anything else we can try to answer a question about. Social Pete here will take your questions. If you are watching later on YouTube, please like and subscribe PC Mag's YouTube channel and consider coming over to Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern on weekdays uh, to participate in the discussion around each one cool thing. Um, our cool thing today is big, it's beautiful, what is it? Yeah, this is a Dell Inspiron 27 inch all-in-one. It's the Inspiron 27 7000 and this thing really is as close as you're going to get to an iMac competitor. And I have to say there's a couple of things about it which really strike me as better than the iMac. And I want to start out with this screen, this matte screen, this delightfully matte screen. Yes, exactly. Matte, at not M-A-T, M-A-T-T-E. It means basically that there is no glossiness. Well, there's a bit of glossiness, but if you are using this in a brightly lit design studio, kitchen area, wherever, this is going to reflect many fewer uh, reflections from ambient light than the 27-inch iMac, which has a really glossy screen. Yeah, yeah, and I have to say, I'm looking at it edge on, and the viewing angle on this really nice as well. Yeah, that's the other thing. It has in-plane switching, which lots of monitors have these days. But uh, that means that basically you can turn and look at it from pretty much any angle, and you're not going to degrade the colors that you see. And now this is flat out 4K. Is that is yeah. that the resolution today? So this is a 4K display, which is uh, I believe 3100 by something uh, you know on on the base, which is not quite as highly detailed as the iMac 27 inch that has a 5K display. The difference between the two really, it, it's much, the difference is much more related to the glossiness of the screen than that, than that additional 4 to 5K. It's now the next obvious thing that comes out here for me is this sound bar. How's the sound bar? Yeah, so interestingly enough, Dell uh, makes more than just one really good iMac competitor. Um, and its, its main iMac competitor is the XPS 27. That thing has 10 speakers, like, you know, six speakers on the bottom, four speakers out, and it sounds like, a, you know, a home theater. Mm -hmm. Now, this thing has, as you can see, also really big speakers. I actually took this into our sound testing room, turned it up to fu full volume, and the, only, it, the volume was incredible. The only difference between with the, the XPS 27 is the quality of the sound. It's mm -hmm. not, the, the bass isn't quite Doesn't as the robust. Depth. Does, yeah. it, does it distort when it's loud? Uh, no, no okay. distortion, okay. no distortion. Now, uh, let's talk about a thing which looks like a downside but actually represents an upside. And that is this monster here. <laughs> yeah. Take a look at this power brick. <laughs> okay. Um, if, if you're keeping if you're keeping your all-in-one in the kitchen, you're gonna have to find a place to store the power brick. Like it'll need its own drawer or something. Yeah. Why is this so big? Yeah, and heavy too. That's yeah, the other yeah. Thing. It's really heavy. Basically, this power brick exists because the version of the 27 7000 that we have here has an has a AMD Radeon. Uh, RX 580 graphics processor, which um, is equivalent to like an NVIDIA 1060 for those of you who know about graphics cards. But for those of you who don't, basically it means it sucks up immense power, more power than the NVIDIA uh, one. Yeah, and the difference between the 8 gig 580 in here and the, five se the 4 gig 570 in the iMac is double the gaming frame rate. Yeah, so you are, you know, unfortunately you have to deal with this monstrosity, but um, you have immense graphics graphics power. I mean, like, this is not designed primarily for gaming, but as long as you are willing to play in full HD gaming, this thing is, like, twice as good, as you said. Now, you said you could call up something gorgeous here. Can you call up something gorgeous? Oh, yeah. Well, I was thinking we should show the difference in the frame rates on the chart, but yes, we could definitely visually show that. Uh, let's see here. Let's, we have some games here, because we did some graphics testing with this computer a couple okay. months ago. Um, so now while this loads, <laughs> while this loads, we're going to talk about, uh, let me talk about some of the ports on this because that's always a relevant thing, especially on a device which this isn't really expandable, right? 
Um, no, actually, yes, that's another advantage oh. of the iMac. So Dell allows you to remove, there's actually a fairly simple guide online. You can mm -hmm. remove the back panel mm -hmm. um, and you have access to the hard drive and memory. Now, uh, that is a huge advantage of the iMac, which has always been, right. sold, which has always been shut. And what, what, kind of, what kind of storage and memory does this come with? Uh, okay, so we have the kind of the top of the line version mm -hmm. as far as the storage. We have a 256 gig gigabyte SSD in here. That's not um, big. But, but uh -huh. it's coupled to it's it's included with a two terabyte uh, ah. solid or uh, regular spinning drive, which is a great configuration, I think, because you can keep, store most of your files on the SSD. You keep Windows on the you keep Windows yeah. on the SSD, and then you keep your video library on the spinning hard drive. So what I've done here is I've just uh, set up our uh, gaming simulation at like ultra quality, 4K resolution, mm -hmm. and we'll 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 show. Um, so it's <laughs> actually right now it has really bad frame rates. It's like 15 frames this per second. This is 16 frames per second in 4K. <laughs> yeah, this is a, because it's a 4K because now. Because it's 60 at 1080p. Yeah. Now let's look at this chart here just because yeah. it, it clears things up here. But basically. Uh, you don't want to use this for 4K gaming. You right. actually need an even more powerful graphics but card. But you want to use it. But oh, you can sorry. use it for yeah. 1080p. Right. Like what we're seeing here. Yeah. What we're seeing here is that um, with uh, you know with this with this uh, Valley bench with this va Valley benchmark, um, ultra quality native 1080p. It's 60 frames per second as opposed to 38 on the iMac. Right. So we can. We can kick that down move to it down to yeah, 1080p, down. and down. then we'll s see that there are many more frames that aren't being dropped. Right, and it'll be like super smooth. Uh, okay, so we'll do 1080p here. That's what we want. 1920 by oh, yep. 1920, no, no. 1920 by. You need to. Uh, oh, I see where I can. Yeah, 16, it's yeah, the 16, 16, 16, 16, 1920 by 1080. Run, yeah. and let's show let's show how smooth <clears throat> this becomes. Um, Oh yeah, so, so ports. Yeah, right. while this is loading, okay, so on the side here I see SD card slot, here's a USB 3, here's a headphone jack. On the back, hi, <laughs> on the back um, we've got uh, four more USB A's, no, five more USB A's. Yeah, there's USB lots of USB C, ports. One this USB C, two HDMI outs. What's on the other side? No, sorry. There is one HDMI output and one HDMI input. HDMI and I, input? I've actually been, because this is such a good screen, I've been using this screen for the past week or so as my primary display, and it's great. It's, so, it's amazing. So if you're in a dorm room or something, you can hook up your cable box to yeah, this sure, and just sure. have it be your TV. Yeah, now, and here's your 60 frames per second, we've by got, the way, at 1080. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah All right, yeah. so we've got a question, it looks like. How would you convince an iMac user to make the switch to this? Okay, well, there is one thing that I can't convince anyone about, and that is the operating system. I mean, if you, if you like Mac OS, mm -hmm. you like Mac OS. If you like Windows, you like Windows. That aside, um, what we said at the beginning about the, the screen uh, matte uh, versus glossy, that really is, I think, the, the, the biggest differentiator. Um, if, you use your computer, um, if you use your computer in brightly lit rooms, you should consider a matte display. You're not going to get quite the, the color poppiness. Uh, I don't know if that's an adjective, but you're not going to get that. But I think that um, in those situations, you should definitely choose the matte display. Also, this is not a touch screen, but neither is the, the, the iMac. The iMac. Yeah. So if you're not accustomed to touching, interacting with your computer via touch, this is a fine option. Yeah, I mean, I would say, I would say the matte display for one thing, but also just in terms of an application perspective, and we have focused on this because of the graphics card and the giant brick, gaming. Oh, um, yes, right. The Mac OS is still very, very weak when yeah. compared to Windows on gaming. And you may be, if you're considering an iMac, you may be stuck out of the loop of your friends when it comes to playing the latest games or games that they're interested in or games that you might be interested in. Whereas uh, if you choose Windows, you'll be much more in the mainstream when it comes to gaming. Now, but going even further on the performance thing with that, further down the performance rabbit hole, the Ryzen processor in this computer has eight cores. That's double the number of cores that the uh, iMac with the Core i7 has. So if you are using some sort of very specialized application that can take advantage of those additional cores, not necessarily a game, something like a you know graphics design or application a statistics or statistics package, yeah, that something sort of like that. Stuff, yeah. 
Uh, Microsoft it, Excel. Yeah, Excel. The, yeah. The, uh, anything that's written to take advantage of the cores in a processor, um, you know, for the same price. Oh, we haven't talked about price, which we'll get to in a second. This has double the cores, um, and it also has. It's a three gigahertz clock speed, so it's also a high high. Quality. Yeah, I mean, I, so so I was I was calling out gaming as one application. I mean, I would call out Excel yeah. as another application where um, Excel scales really easily across cores. That's one of the great strengths of that application. And uh, if you're staring at numbers uh, all the time, that matte screen is gonna be a lot easier on the eyes. And even like video encoding, as you can see, the iMac 27, it took uh, a minute to encode our test video uh, versus 40 seconds for mm -hmm. the, uh, for the and that's right. much but on the other quicker. hand on the other hand um, looking at one of our other benchmarks photoshop Didn't uh, do it as well. pretty much the yeah, same oh, sorry yeah, yeah pretty much the same photoshop pretty much the same and yeah. a lot of photographers and people who work regularly with images are more comfortable with the mac operating system anyway all of those tools are available on the mac you're not going to pull a photographer or a photo editor over from the mac to this pc okay let's talk about price $1800 same as the iMac. Mm -hmm. iMac 27 inch, 5K display, 1800. This thing right here, as configured, you know, Dell prices change a lot more than Apple's do, but it's still, it's 1800. Mm -hmm. So there's, there, it's a wash there. Well, your frame rates just really just went. Oh kind yeah, of I can here. hear, I can what hear happened? it. Uh, it's probably doing a Windows update or something. You can actually, <laughs> you can actually, you can feel the, feel, put your hand you up feel here. The you, heat. Can, you can feel the air uh, coming out. So of there the, are fans in here, but the fans aren't that noisy. No, I mean the fans are running, and you can barely hear them. So. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions out there? Let's see. Someone says, what's the best 27-inch all-in-one with the touch screen? Is that it? No. So this one doesn't have a touch screen. As I was mentioning earlier, the, XP, the Dell XPS 27 um, does have a touch screen. Same 4K display, but it has a glossy finish and it has mm -hmm. a touch screen. Uh, there are also lots of other, not lots, there are a few other high-end uh, all-in-ones as well. The HP Envy uh, mm -hmm. all-in-one actually has a curved display, um, which we really like. That mm -hmm. thing is more than $1,800, though. Um, but so there are other touchscreen options. And, and let's go to why. So, so we've been praising matte screens. Um, let's go to why you might want a glossy screen, which I say with a lot of caution because I do not personally want a glossy screen. But the one major advantage of glossy screens is that if you aren't lit from behind, and so you don't have the problem of that reflectivity, colors look deeper and more saturated on a glossy screen. Yeah. And so yeah. watching movies, for instance, mm -hmm. watching videos, watching even web videos um, on a glossy screen gives a kind of deeper punch as long as you're not struggling with that reflectivity. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a matter of taste and it's a matter of what you're doing with the computer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any more questions out there? How does this stack up to an Alienware? So the al so okay so an Alienware all-in-one or desktop computer, you're probably going to want to outfit that uh, with a even more powerful graphics card. Um, so you know, graphics-wise, uh, you know, if you're buying a dedicated desktop or a dedicated gaming desktop or gaming all-in-one, you should go for a N Nvidia 1070 or 1080. Um, which is going to get you the ability to do 4K gaming. So I would say that the chief difference between this and a gaming desktop is that a gaming desktop has even better frame rates and even now more that said, you can power. still run VR off of this, right? Oh yes, this is definitely VR capable. Um, virtual reality headsets really, you know, the, the minimum, absolute minimum, is less than this. It's a 10, an NVIDIA 1060, which, mm -hmm. which this is a better processor than that. Um, and Dell makes a big deal about how this is virtual ready virtual mm -hmm. reality ready. Okay, okay, any more questions out there? I think we're all set. Okay, great. So uh, let's see, so we rated this four stars, but you're not calling it the editor's choice. It sounds no. like there's a lot of good choices out there yeah, in terms it's, of all-in-ones. It's tough, I mean, the, it, you know, this ultimately, uh, the XPS 27 is our editor's choice for, for best um, mm -hmm. all, high-end all-in-one, but it, you know, you're spoiled for choice, really, because 
because uh, you have your options of displays, you have your options of Ryzen versus Intel, it's, it's all there. Yeah, and I gotta say, the office is a little chilly today. <laughs> I am warming my hands on this power brick. It's really oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you get the less expensive version of this with the low or low graphics card, you know, you, ha you don't have this giant power brick. So if, you need, if, if your heat's not working very well, spring for the, the 580. Okay, great. <laughs> so the Dell Inspiron 27 7000 all in one, starting around $1,800, four stars. Uh, not an editor's choice, but we still like it. There's just a lot of good all-in-ones out there right now. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, if you're on uh, YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're on Facebook, uh, we will be back on Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern uh, for another One Cool Thing.